Hi, I'm Casey Henry and welcome to The Murphy Method. The song we're going to take up for today is Dear Old Dixie, uh, as played by Earl Scruggs mostly. Uh, this is not an exact note for note uh, version of his recording, but I'd say it's about 95%. So I'm going to play it through for you fast, I'm going to play it through for you slow, and then we are going to uh, break it down and look at it a lick at a time. So here we go with Dear Old Dixie. <laughs> So now we're going to look at it a little bit more slowly. Now, I want to mention before we get into learning this that Dear Old Dixie is a quite challenging song. It's technically hard and it's long. Both, both left hand work and rolls are um, pretty challenging. So I really encourage you to take it a little piece at a time. Half a phrase or a phrase at a time. Get that down and get comfortable with it. Really get it in your head before you move on to the next phrase. And keep in mind that it'll probably take you a long time to get it up to any kind of playing speed, simply because it's so difficult technically. Um, but don't try and go too fast too soon or else you'll just end up with one big sloppy mess. So with that in mind, we're going to start by taking a look at the introduction. Now this little introduction lick is totally optional. Earl played it and uh, Murphy played it on her Eminem Blues recording when she recorded it. But it's just a fancy introduction and you can totally leave it off if you want to. That said, this is what it is. Okay, so we're in our Cumberland Gap position. If you're learning this song, you should definitely already know what the Cumberland Gap position is and have quite a bit of experience playing in it. Otherwise, this song is going to be well nigh impossible for you at this point in your learning. So just to uh, clarify, index fingers goes on the second string at the um, eighth fret, ring finger goes on the first string at the ninth fret, middle finger goes on the third string at the ninth fret. We start out with a pinch of one and two, then we do this. So you're gonna put your little finger on the 11th fret of the second string, play five, two, one, and then five, three, one, that will, your middle finger will be on the third string there. Then we have these two notes. So you're going to reach back with your index finger and fret the seventh fret of the third string. Play it with your thumb. And then with your middle finger, you're going to fret the ninth fret of the fourth string. Play uh, four one. 
So your ring finger stays anchored there in the spot where it is at its Cumberland Gap position spot, which is the ninth fret of the first string. So when you play that 4-1, both the fourth and the first string are fretted at the ninth fret. So, so far in this lick we have Then the last little roll is, so you're going to pop back to your Cumberland Gap position, play 5-3-1-5, then once again reach back with your index finger to that 7th fret of the 3rd string note, and that'll be picked with an index finger. And that's the end of the introductory lick, so let's put it together. this is really syncopated so I would highly rec recommend getting Earl's recording of this song and listening to it to try and make it sound like his it's almost impossible to, to explain how it sits in the timing just by listening to it a lot get it in your head and try and make yours sound as much like his as possible <laughs> okay now we come to the real pickup notes of the song and if you don't play the introduction lick, this is where you're going to start. Okay, these are all on the first string, so you're going to fret the 12th fret with your index finger. There's a quick two notes there, I play a middle, fur, uh, uh, middle index, then you're going to play 14-15, 14-12. So you're just going up and then right back down. And all those following notes are picked with your middle finger. Those are our pickup notes. And then the first phrase really starts right here. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in here. We've got three more notes that kind of function as pickup notes. So you're going to switch your hand position and now put your ring finger on the 12th fret. We're going to play 12, 11, 10 and you're going to fret it ring, middle, index, straight down the first string. Again, those are picked with your middle finger. So our first lick after those three notes is this. So in your Cumberland Gap position, you're going to play two first strings, then a forward roll, five, two, one, five. Then you're going to scoot your whole position backwards one fret. You're going to move it as one piece, So in this, uh, but in this new spot, we're just going to play a first string. We play a one, five. And then you scoot it back up to its regular place and play another one, five. So it should sound like this. So that's the first lick. Let's attach it to our pickup note. So we've got... Okay, second lick. Coming up to the 12th fret. Fret it with your ring finger. We're going to play one, then we're going to slide from 11 to 12 on the second string and play two one. So that uh, first uh, string is still fretted at the 12th fret. So that's one, two, one. And then we're going to do this. Now for this, you open up the first string. The only string that we're going to fret is the second string. Again, we're sliding from 11 to 12, and this time it comes in the context of a forward roll. So we're going to play 5, 2, 1, 5. And when you play that second string, you're sliding from 11 to 12. And then you're going to end on a second string back in your Cumberland Gap position. So it'll be... 
that second string is really part of that roll. So let's put that whole lick together. Okay, the last lick in our little phrase here is this. So you're going to add your uh, little finger on the 11th fret of the 2nd. You're going to play 5, 2, 1. Then you're going to take your little finger up. You're going to play 5. And then you're going to pinch 1 and 2. So it's... And that's the last lick in the phrase. Okay, so let's go back to the top of our first phrase and put all this together. We're going to have this. second phrase, make sure you stop here, work on that first phrase for a little while, make sure you've got it down, then continue on with the second phrase. And I really want you to, you, you to do that with every phrase in the song. I'm not going to stop and say it in the lesson every time, but I want you to pause, make sure you've got that phrase, and then continue on with the second phrase. Here is what our second phrase sounds like. <laughs> So for this, we're sliding up into a C chord. Now first, let me tell you where your fingers are going to end up. You're starting out, as always, in your Cumberland Gap position. When you end this slide, your index and middle fingers are going to be in the same place as they are right now. Your ring finger is going to be at the 10th fret of the first string. So essentially, your ring finger is just moving out one fret from where it is. Everything else is staying the same. But we're going to back up and slide into this position. So you're going to take your Cumberland Gap position, back it up one fret, the whole thing. We're going to play the third string and slide up into the C position. So essentially the slide is from 8 to 9 on the third string, but all your fingers are sliding back up into their uh, new position. So after you play that third string slide, you're going to play 1, 2, 1 in our C chord, then we're going to do this. So you're going to take your middle finger and move it to the 10th fret of the 2nd string. You're going to play 5, 2, 1, then you're going to take your middle finger and put it back in its regular place on the 9th fret of the 3rd and play a 5, 2 on the end of that roll. So the whole roll is 5, 2, 1, 5, 2. So, so far, let's put those two little pieces of the lick together. Then we're going to do this. So, still in our C chord, we're going to do a forward and backward roll. Five, two, one, two, three. Ah, there's a first string on the end, so it's five, two, one, two, three, one. And then you're going to reach back to that 7th fret on the 3rd string note fretted with your index finger here. So it's... After that note, we pop back to our Cumberland Gap position for this. Now this is one of our up the neck tag licks. There are several, several variations to this, but this lick is... Stick your little finger out to that 11th fret of the 2nd string, play 5, 2, 1. Take your little finger off, play 2, 3, 1, 2. And that's the lick. So we got... And that's where our second phrase ends. So let's back up to the beginning of that second phrase and put it together. Here we go. Now our third phrase is mostly a repetition of the first phrase. 
which you should recognize as soon as I play it for you. So I'll play through the third phrase, and then we'll talk about the new lick on the end. Here we go. Okay, so this much is an exact repeat of the first phrase. there on that second string is where the repeat ends and this is our new ending lick. Now this is kind of an unusual lick. It's neat. I've always loved it. Um, you're in your Cumberland Gap position but you want to remove your ring finger so that the first string is open. Second and third strings are still fretted and we're gonna play this. So this is forward roll. It's three, one, five, two, one, five. It doesn't sound like that's what the roll is, but I, that, I promise that's what the roll really is. Three, one, five, two, one, five. So that goes neatly on the end of that third phrase there. First lick is this. So for this, we're taking our Cumberland Gap position and we're sliding it up two frets. So it's we're using it as an A chord or an A position rather. So you slide on the second string. So that slide is going to be actually from eight to ten on the second string. You pick it with your index. And then you're going to pick it again when you get there. The roll is. So it's a 2 1 5. Then you're going to add your little finger now on the 13th fret of the second string. You're going to play another 2 1 5. And then take off your little finger for the last note, which is the second. So it's. And I bring my thumb down for the very first note of that roll because we've just played the second string with your index for that slide. So I play it again with my thumb at the beginning of that roll. You don't have to do that, but that's what you'll see me doing here. Now on the end of that uh, roll, there's a fifth string, kind of for filling. It's an eighth note, so it's just kind of hanging out there in the middle of the measure. It's up there by itself. Then we have this. Okay, so this is a long string of notes picked on the first string with your middle finger. The first two notes, ninth fret, eleventh fret, and then we just repeat the pickup notes that we used at the beginning of the song. 12, 14, 15, then 14, 12, and then you make that hand position change so that your ring finger will be on the 12th, middle on 11, index on 10. Okay, so that's where our fourth phrase ends. Let's back up and put it together. We've got... Now our next phrase, again, is largely repetition from the first phrase. And this time we go a little bit further than we did when we repeated it um, one phrase ago. Uh, so all of this is a repeat. First phrase and a little bit of the second phrase through that C lick. So I'll play up through the repeat and then we'll, we'll talk about the new stuff that comes after. So all this is repetition. Well, we already played these three notes. 
those were kind of repetition too. So this. Okay, at this point we have a new lick and the new lick sounds like this. This is one of the more challenging left hand things you're going to do in your playing. We're, we're making a B chord here. So this is would be a regular, it's one fret behind your regular C vamp chord. So your little finger is at the, on the first string at the ninth fret, index, second string, seventh fret, middle, third string, eighth fret, ring, fourth string, ninth fret. So it's a B chord. Now we're going to hook our thumb over the top of the neck and catch the fifth string at the seventh fret. And that makes a seventh note. So we're really making a B7 chord. And we're going to do this roll. Okay, so the first roll here is four, two, one, five, and then a pinch of one and two. And then we're gonna keep rolling. Those are two forward rolls, five, two, one, five, two, one. And then we end with a square roll, five, two, three, one. Okay, so let's put that whole B7 lick together. And if all those notes aren't coming out exactly clear, don't worry too much about it. Get the roll down. In time, your left hand will get used to making that move, hooking your thumb over the top, and it'll come out uh, more cleanly. But just for now, make sure you're getting that roll down. Now before we go forward, let's go back and put that long phrase together from where we started there with the repeat um, all the way up through that B7 lick. All right, here we go. probably won't be able to put together that fast just yet, but you can um, make sure you can play it all in order at some speed, even if it's agonizingly slow before finishing out the song from here. Okay, so from here to the end of the song is pretty much one long phrase, so let me play it through. Now this is a C lick. If you'll remember, we're sliding right up into it from our previous lick, which was a B. So we've got this four fingered vamp chord position going. So we're just gonna stay in that position and we're gonna do this. So the roll is the same as the last time we slid up into our C chord, only we're fingering it differently. So we're sliding on this third string. So that'll be a slide from, uh, what is that, eight to nine, and then you play a one, two, one when you get there. Then we do this. So you're gonna add now your ring finger onto the second string at the 10th fret, and we're gonna do forward rolls. Five, two, one, five, then lift your ring finger up and play another two on the end of the roll. 
So the whole roll is 5, 2, 1, 5, 2. And then the last roll in our C here is... This is a 2, 1, 5, 2, 1, 5 roll. And it's just in the regular C chord, no ring finger on the second string. And again, this is another one of those times where I'm dropping my thumb down to get the first note of that roll, that second string, 2, 1, 5. You can get a little more power behind that thumb, um, and it's a, just a kind of punchier way to play it. Um, so you'll see me do that. You don't have to do that. It's totally optional. Okay, so let's put that C lick together from the slide. Next lick. So we're up here in our 12th fret. Ring finger on the first string, middle finger on the second string, 12th fret. You're going to play twice on the first, and then do a 5-2-1-2 two, two roll. And that's all we get there at our 12th fret. Now the next three rolls all take place in your four finger F shape vamp position. First one is in an E chord. So your ring finger will be at the, the um, oh, 14th fret, uh, middle, third string, 13th fret, index, second string, 12th fret, ring, first string, 14th fret. This is an E chord, and holding this position down, we're going to play 4 1, then 3 2 1, then 2 3 1, and that's the roll pattern. Okay, so you come into that four fingered vamp position from your little two finger G chord. And this, for a lot of people, is a tricky move. Moving from here to getting all your four fingers down at the same time to do that E roll. Keeping in mind that the fourth string is the first um, note string that you're going to play in this chord, you want to make sure that your, four, your uh, ring finger is the first one that goes down on that first string. If you can't put them all down at the same time, which is the ideal way to do it, make sure in any case that your ring finger is the first one that's going down because that's the first string that you need. Okay, after the E roll, we're going to scoot back here. So your ring finger is on the um, seventh fret middle, sixth, index, um, fifth. This is an A chord, still in our F shape vamp position. We do the same roll here, four, one, three, two, one, two, three, one. After the A, come up to your D chord at the um, 12th, 11th, and 10th frets, same roll. Okay, so let's back up and put that little bit together from our two finger G chord at the 12th fret. Here we go. Okay, we've got one more lick to finish out here. So this is our same up the neck tag lick that we used earlier in the song. Starts with the second string in your Cumberland Gap position. Then you're going to add your little finger, 11th fret of the second string, play 5, 2, 1. Take it off, play 2, 3, 1, 2. So that's the lick. Alright, so now let's back up and put that whole long ending phrase together, starting from our C lick where we slid up 
uh, from that B7 leg. So here we go, starting with the C. song here but before we go back and put the whole thing together I want to tell you how to end it um, it's got its own little ending lick and the ending lick in this song takes the place of the last tag lick if you're going around to play the song again or you're in a jam and you're passing it off to the next person that's how you end it but if you're at the end of the song and need an ending you leave off that tag and instead you do this. So this ending lick uh, flows right from the last D roll so we're going to modify that last D roll a little bit. Usually uh, the whole roll is 4, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1 in this case, we leave off that last first string. And when you get to the third string, two, three, you slide up the neck to some undetermined fret. It's probably gonna be around um, 17 or 18, somewhere up there. And then our last four notes are on the first string here. So this is, let's see, 12, 14, 17, 19, 20, 21. And the last four notes are syncopated. They're not just equal, equally spaced. So listen to what the timing is on that lick. It's really hard to hear this slow. Um, but listen to the version at the beginning of uh, the lesson here and listen to Earl's version and try and get the timing of those licks in your head. Okay, we have come to the end of the song. So we have to go back to the beginning and put the whole shebang together. So I'm gonna play it not at just an agonizingly slow tempo. I'm gonna play it a little bit faster, uh, a slow medium tempo. I'll go through it two times. The first time I'm gonna put the regular tag lick ending on. Then the second time I'll put the ending lick on so you can see how that attaches on there. All right, here we go with Dear Old Dixie. Here really quick before I let you go because um, it's got a couple uh, other chords in addition to the regular G, C, and D chords. Now in this I'm assuming that you already know your vamp chords, that this is G, this is C, this is D. If you don't um, 
get our vamping DVD and it'll teach you all of that. Um, so I'm just going to kind of run straight through the chords. I'm going to call them out as I go and just kind of hum the tune uh, just so you'll have an idea. So let me just tell you before we start that in addition to G, C, and D, the song also has an A chord, which I use um, the one that's just two frets above my G chord right here. It has an E chord in it, and for the vamping, you can use the same E chord that we used in the lead of the song, which is in your F position, ring finger at the 14th fret uh, of the fourth string here. A, D, E, so yeah, that's all the chords we got. All right, so I'm just gonna run through it from the top, calling out the chords as we go. So we're picking up, sorry. One, two, three. Ba, 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 G, da, 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 da. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba, da. Now C, da, 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 G, da, 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 G, da, ba, da, 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 ba, ba, da, ba. Now up to A, da, da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, da. This is the part that goes where all the rhythm instruments stop right on the D chord and whoever's playing the lead does that little lick. So really it's a four beat D chord but we only play the first one and the rest is just silence. So we pick back up with the vamping on the G. Da 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 G da 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 C da 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 ba da ba da B. I forgot to mention that chord. The B, which for which you just scoot your C vamp back one fret, we got four beats of B. B, D, two, three, four, back to C. Da 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 da. Now G for two. E for two, A for two, D for two, and then back to G at the end. Okay, so that was a little bit fragmented, so let me go through it one more time. For real, not stopping this time, just playing straight through the song. Here we go. Da 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 G da 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 ba 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 da ba ba da 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 C da 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 back to G da 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 G ba ba da ba 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 da ba now up to A da 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 stop on D da 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 G ba da 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 ba ba da ba now up to C da 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 B da 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 up to C da 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 now G for two E for two A for two D for two G all right there's the chords for the song we've already got the lead down so that should be everything you need to successfully jam on Dear Old Dixie or just sit at home and play it by yourself. Um, in any case, uh, I can now say, and there you have it.